welcome to the Peak District, boys and girls. And welcome back to Wild Astro. Thanks for joining me for another adventure, another overnight wild camp. Uh, as I said, today we're in the Peak District. Specifically, we're in uh, Fairbrook. And the plan today is to walk up uh, Grouse Butts via Gateside Clough onto Seal Edge. Um, you'll probably recognise one or two spots from um, some fantastic videos made by the legend that is Patrick Dickinson and uh, the wild camping Welshman Jiffy Myers. So yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to camp exactly where they did or find my own little spot but uh, we'll talk more when I get up there and I can get a better lay of the land and we've got lots of time today so I can explore all the areas before I decide where to pitch up so uh, glad you could join me let's go Beautiful day for walking today. Uh, the sun's not shown himself yet, but it's not too cold, it's about 12 degrees. It's not too windy, although the wind is building as I reach the top of the clough here. And uh, it is forecast to it is forecast to get windy tonight. Gusts of up to 40 mile an hour forecast for this evening. Um, but I'm not worried, it should be a great night. I'll bring you back when I'm a bit further up. I've just stopped for a little rest before, uh, before this final uh, ascent up onto, uh, up onto seal stones. And uh, it feels like it's been a while actually since I've, since I've been up high I've been I've been over the long mend a few times recently, but uh, it's a while since I've been up a up a big hill, and I'm just reflecting that it's easy to forget the beneficial effects of of being in these places, and we get caught up in everyday life and work and you know pursuit of whatever form of happiness you're pursuing. It is easy to forget that these places exist and, and what they do for you. And already, already I'm feeling unwound. Just arriving at the top of uh, top of the clough to uh, seal stones. These fantastic, melty-looking, otherworldly rock formations up on on the end of Seal Edge here. Uh, I've never been to this part of the peaks before, so this particular feature of the landscape is new to me. I'm going to have a bit of an explore around these rocks, they're great. Okay, so 
Welcome to Seal Stones, ladies and gents. Fantastic place to have a little wander about. Loads of natural shelter around. Let's get right up onto this point here. See what we can see. again okay what can we see so this this is seal edge um, way on the far horizon over there is Derwent edge right over in that direction there that's Derwent edge so Lady Bow Reservoir is down there somewhere um, forgive me, I don't know a huge amount about this particular part of the, the peaks. This is Snake Woods down here, and I've walked up from Snake Pass. I don't know if you can see, but Astro One, you can see the van down in the, in the, uh, in the lay-by down there. And the Snake Pass runs up over the, over the, uh, the moorland over there. On in this direction is, is Kinder Low, and this is Kinder Scout and, and Edale Moor over here um, and I'm going to head along this way uh, to uh, Fairbrook Nays. Fairbrook Nays is, is the, the land, the, the point of land on the end over there that you can see. So I'm going to walk all the way over to that and between here and there I'm going to look for somewhere to pitch up tonight. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Let's go. Now, obviously anyone familiar with this part of the peaks probably knows about this, but I've just seen it and it looks kind of cool. So I think there's probably underneath this, this stone here, there's a huge hollow and someone has built a, a natural stone wall around it. So let's take a look. Oh, there's not masses of space in there, but wow. If you were in a pinch, you could definitely make yourself a, definitely make yourself comfortable in there for an evening if you were a bit caught short. And I imagine the sheep love it. Right, moving on. So how do you know when you're not out camping with Dave Outdoors? The sun comes out. Wow. Can you see that? That is an actual shadow there. Wow. And we've got blue sky. The clouds are thinning beautifully. That wasn't on the forecast. What a day, and what a stunning place.
know what else? I haven't seen a single, not one other person up here. It's a sunny Saturday afternoon and there's no one here. been wandering around here, flying the drone, having a little explore, and all of a sudden I happened upon this little spot here, and I'm pretty certain, and if I can find a screenshot from his video I will put it on the screen now, I'm pretty certain this is the exact spot that Mr Dickinson pitched his solo wedging his pegs between the rocks and tying them onto stones, tying the guy lines out to stones and that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm almost certain this is it. Fantastic. I'm not going to camp here. I'm going to move on. I'm going to go closer to Fairbrook Nays over there. I may even go right out on the point over there, but uh, let's see. Moving on. Welcome to Fairbrook Nays, ladies and gents. Uh, I can pretty much see my whole whole walk from here. So Snake Pass is down there and I climbed up this little hump of land here and all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, followed that ridge up onto Seal Stones, which is there. And then I have followed Seal Edge all the way along, all the way along, this way, round here, and followed the path right up here onto Fairbrook Nays. And what a beautiful place it is. Some stunning rock formations. Um, really, really beautiful views all around. Northeast, north, towards Derwent Edge over there and Bamford Edge sorry that's northeast isn't it northwest was where I started um, yeah fantastic and just where my bag is here is a spot big enough to pitch the solo so uh, that's my next job let's get cracking We go home sweet home right on the tip of Fairbrook Nays brilliant and what a view what a view right out the door fantastic right time for a brew
So I've got a couple of new bits of kit to show you today. Um, the first one you've probably clocked um, during the first part of this film. Um, got a new pair of I've got a new pair of boots on. Um, they are the um, British Army issue ECW or extreme cold weather boots which I've bought in preparation for doing some winter camping this year. Um, if you've seen my my film from uh, the Glitherow last year, uh, last December, you'll know that I absolutely loved it. Every minute of being out in the snow. Uh, and I want to do more of that this year without fail. So uh, I've decided to prepare myself uh, a little bit more for it because I did okay. I was warm enough. Um, but I'd like to be able to attach uh, some proper crampons um, and potentially take an ice axe with me as well, uh, just, just for extra safety. Um, so I've bought some boots. I'll, I'll show you more of them in a, in a few minutes. Um, but they're great. I'm, from, from walking up here in them, I've, I, you know, I've had a wander around near, near home in them uh, and they were okay, they were comfortable. Um, coming up here, no problem. Um, I, I know that probably I should have gone on a longer walk on the flat with them first. Um, if I'm 100% honest, I've got a bit of a hot spot on my left heel. Um, so I'm going to tape that up tonight and uh, and hopefully that won't get any worse um, uh, on my walk down in the morning. But uh, great, really great boots. Uh, top quality, um, reassuringly solid. Uh, and quite weighty as well. So they won't be my regular, you know, everyday kind of walking boot, first of all, because they're cold weather boots, but um, secondly, because they're they're heavy and they're sort of inconveniently difficult to lace up. So uh, yeah, we'll stick to just winter for them. The second bit of new kit I've got is a new sleeping mat, uh, which I'll show you in a little while. Uh, it's fantastic, uh, fantastic thing. I'm very impressed with it so far from what I've seen of it. It's got an R rating of five. Um, that's the new R rating, which I, I think is sort of the equivalent of the of the Thermarest X Therm, but I'm sure someone will quite happily correct me if I'm wrong there. In the old rating, the X Therm had, a, had an R rating of nine. Um, which I think is equivalent to the current R rating of five. But if anyone knows the science behind that, please feel free to pop it in the comments below and, and what the equivalent new versus old R ratings are. Um, I'd be very grateful uh, for that extra bit of information, uh, which I'll, I'll share. Uh, but I'll show you the new mat uh, shortly. It's the Amok um, Winter Light, uh, what they call the Fjol uh, Winter Light. Uh, it's the only... Uh, the only sleeping mat on the market that is two meters and twenty centimeters long. So all you tall people out there, if you if you're struggling to find a sleeping mat that is, you know, long enough for you to for you to be warm, top to top to bottom, then the Amok Fjol Winterlight um, XL could be the way to go. I'll show you it again uh, in a little while, or I'll show you it when I when I pump it up in a little while. It's a fantastic thing. Um, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be very, very warm. Okay, so let's talk boots. Um, these are the British Army Extreme Cold Weather Leather and Gore-Tex boots. Uh, they've got Vibram, Vibram, however you want to pronounce it, soles. Um, so they're extremely hard wearing. They feel like they're going to be very, very hard wearing indeed. And if I lift my leg up here, they come right up to sort of mid shin kind of length they're they're really high and um, the tongue is stitched into to well above the ankle so they're going to be waterproof up to what that's nearly getting on for eight inches above the ground really um the lacings the the lace locks here are pretty effective so you can tighten the bottom half and then get your top half all laced in um so that works quite nicely they're, they're relatively soft and um, considering they're made of very thick hard wearing leather um, and I've been very impressed with them on this uh, on this trip so far. Um, I have to thank Chris Homer uh, for turning my head toward these boots um, on his uh, on his latest film, um, and for and for his advice on uh, on various other bits and pieces as well regarding uh, photography and 
uh, and other things. He's, he's a great guy. If you if you want to pick his brain on anything that he does or or mentions in his films, then well worth doing. Um, now the second bit of new kit that I've got here it is. Right, so here it is. This is the Amok Fiol XL Winter Light. Now, if you have a look, you can see the weight of it here. It's 940 grams. It's got an R rating of five, which they reckon makes it a comfort rating of minus 18 degrees Celsius. Interesting. The dimensions of it are 220. As I, as I mentioned already, it's the only mattress that you can buy as a 220 centimeter length mattress. Brilliant, brilliant for those tall people who find it difficult to get hold of one that fits their full length. 65 centimeters wide and nine centimeters thick. So it's thicker than my Thermarest X Therm. Um, and the baffles on it are vertical rather than horizontal. So I'm hoping it's gonna be more comfortable than the X Therm as well. Uh, the reason I bought this purely is that the X Therm is just too thin. I'm a side sleeper and I really, really struggle. It does come with a pump bag included. And this is roughly speaking, I mean, if I lay this down here next to my sleeping bag, it's really, really heavily compressed at the moment, my sleeping bag is, but they're pretty similar in size. And that's the um, Alpkit Pipe Dream 400 in there, compressed right down in an extra small uh, Sea to Summit event compression sack. Um, what I've seen of the Amok uh, mat so far, when I've had it out of the bag, pumped it up, lay on it at home, um, very, very good. Very impressed with the quality of it. Uh, very impressed with the, the hardware that it comes with, the, the valve and, and um, the, the bag itself is extremely lightweight and the pump sack is very high quality as well. So I'm very impressed with it. Um, I'll let you know more about it, obviously in the morning in terms of the warmth of it. Um, but uh, leave that one with me until the morning and, uh, and I'll talk to you more about it then. Okay, so we're gonna get the, uh, we're gonna get the new sleeping mat out and uh, inflated. So here we go. So one more time, this is the Fjol XL Winter Light by Amok. That's the inflation sack, which I'm not gonna be using today. There is actually, a, there's a repair patch uh, and kit inside there as well, uh, that hopefully I won't be using today. Um, so we'll just pop those away over the back there. Right, so here's the mat itself. Um, the underside is black um, and straight away, you can feel the real high quality of the, of the materials used here. Um, you can feel, they, they describe it as a synthetic, um, a synthetic uh, insulation inside that is welded, and by that they mean, I guess, plastic welded, like solvent welded, to the top and bottom faces, so that when it inflates, the insulation is spread um, so that it fills the fills the cavity inside fully, and you can feel the thickness of it. it, yeah, it it's difficult to show you, but you can feel the thickness. There's a, there's a sort of spongy texture between the front and back uh, panels of the of the mat there, which is the the insulation waiting to be uh, waiting to be um, expanded when the when the thing uh, blows up. Right, um, the valve is here. It is. It's over here. The valve you'll be quite familiar with. It's fairly standard. Um, it's a one-way uh, one-way valve. But if you want, to, when you want to uh, deflate, you simply pull this, and out that comes and allows the air to flow out nice and quickly. And then you just push it back in again when you're done, and that will stop any air from escaping when you don't want it to. I'm going to be using the tiny pump um, with this attachment on it, which is the same attachment that I use for the the Trackology UL80. So let's get going and see how long it takes. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. We are filled. Now, this, it's, as I say, 220 centimetres long, 65 centimetres wide, and it absolutely fills the Hilleberg Solo perfectly. Perfectly. It could not fit this floor pan any better. It really couldn't. With my extra space over there for, for all my gear. Um, brilliant. I'm really looking forward to tonight seeing how just how warm this mat is. So uh, yeah, great stuff. Absolutely over the moon with this. The Amok Fjol XL Winterlight. Brilliant. Okay, so something a bit different for dinner tonight. 
Um, I know I've, I've moaned about fire pot in the past, so I'm, I'm going to... In my head, I'm taking a bit of a risk tonight, but I've gone for a fire pot meal again, and this is the porcini uh, mushroom risotto. Um, so we're going to give that a try tonight, and then I've got a uh, I've got a summit to eat chocolate mousse um, for for dessert. So I'm going to get those down me, and uh, yeah, warm up because uh, it's getting chilly now. Temperatures dropping. I may have to put the um, may have to put the uh, down jacket on tonight for the first time this year, but uh, let's see. Uh, right, let's get some food on. And I've just realised I've made an unreal schoolboy error tonight. No beer, no hip flask. So I had to turn the camera on and uh, and let you know about this. Um, I've got the... Uh, the fire pot porcini mushroom risotto made up here and here it is beautiful um, risotto rice in there um, lots of lovely big chunks of mushroom and it's very good it's very good I think I've found a fire pot meal that someone actually tasted during production and said, hang on folks, we need to add some flavour to it. I'm going to get this down me and uh, carry on enjoying this view. So, uh, it's time to uh, time to say goodnight. Um, thank you for joining me on this trip. I'll see you in the morning. Um, there's going to be no uh, time lapse of the night sky tonight. Um, the forecast is for rain to come in uh, in the early hours of the morning and stick with me until probably the afternoon tomorrow, but I'll be long gone by then, so no problem. Um, so I'm fully expecting to be packing a wet tent away in the morning. Um, you never know though, we'll see. Uh, the wind is forecast to, to um, increase over the night, but I've got quite a sheltered spot here as well, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It wouldn't be an issue anyway, it's only going up to about 40 mile an hour gusts. Um, and that's it. Yeah, I'm going to get some sleep and I shall see you in the morning. Night night. Morning. Coffee. Oh, they're going to steam up. Okay, uh, it's just gone seven thirty. <coughs> And uh, this is going to be pretty savage, I think. Let's have a bit of a look at the view. Yeah, that's quite enough of that. Ugh. Okay. I'm gonna have my coffee. I'm gonna get packed up. Hopefully I'll film some of it.
Mm. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Right. Let's get packed up. I'm not going back the long way that I came up and if I come to this edge down here through the mist I can just about make out down there the path back down to the snake pass so this is it this is where I'm going I'll speak to you when I get back down on the flat As you can see, there's been a fair bit of rain overnight. Ooh. But I'm pleased to report the new boots are keeping my feet bone dry. Uh, well, this has been one of the wettest, windiest mornings I've had in a tent. But it's been great fun. It's like they say, isn't it? There's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. And uh, I'm pleased to report that all of my wet weather gear has kept me nice and dry so far. Um, incidentally, my two main bits of wet weather gear are my crag hoppers uh, trousers, which are fleece lined with all zip pockets and everything. You can grab them from Go Outdoors. I think they're about 40 quid absolute bargain um, and my jacket is a mountain equipment Lote C Gore-Tex Pro waterproof jacket and it is the business absolute business it has never let me down um, and I love it to bits I wouldn't want to be without it in wet weather right about to drop off another steep bit so you get in a bit.
put full reviews on the Amok Fjol XL Winter Light uh, sleeping mat, which performed really well, by the way. I'm very impressed with it. Not a, not a moment of cold last night at all. Um, and the uh, British Army ECW boots. I'll get full reviews of both of those up um, fairly soon. Very impressed with both of them. Um, lots to say, lots to tell you about both items. Um, but now, I'm off. Finally, I'm off now straight to Wakefield and then Rotherham to collect the cupboard units and the rock and roll bed for this van. Um, so, fingers crossed, uh, I'm getting right to the end of the road where Astro One is going to be a completed camper van conversion. If you've been following along with that, then join me on my next film because that's what I'm going to be doing, putting together the, uh, well, I'm going to be collecting and then putting together the cupboards. Um, and the curtains as well, by the way, I've got them. The cupboards, the curtains, and the rock and roll bed in Astro One. But for now, thanks ever so much for joining me on this adventure, guys. It's been a great trip. Quite often I, I get a bit miserable and sullen when it gets wet like this, but do you know what? Like I said earlier, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing, and today I had the right clothing. So I'm happy as Larry today. Um, very, very pleased with the trip. Really, really good fun. Um, great new place to explore as well. If you've never been up onto Fairbrook Nays and, and this sort of mid to northern, northeastern part of the um, of the Peak District, get up here. Uh, it's really, really great. And fantastic views all the way around and, and a really great place to walk. Don't get me wrong, it's tough. It's tough on the feet. It's tough going up there in rocky, broken ground, but it's really, really beautiful. Um, so, all that remains to say is, leave no trace folks, that's how we roll, and this is Richie for Wild Astro, signing off, I'll see you next time.